they love the most. And that's you, and that's the United States of the America, and that's who President Trump fights for every single day. He goes to the mat for you, for your families, for your communities, and for your future of this country. I recently read a quote that I thought was so amazing by the legendary Winston Churchill. He said it was a nation that had the lion's heart. I just had the luck to give it its roar. How much does that remind you of our president and this movement? Did he give all of us the roar? Yes, he did. He made all of us take a hard look at our own convictions and ask ourselves, what do we want for our country? We want jobs, we want opportunity, we want to believe in American greatness, and that's what's on the ballot. With your help, with your support, and with your vote, in two days from now, we are going to win four more years for the people's president. My father, Donald J. Trump. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless Michigan. Does anybody have a coat I could use, please? This is definitely not the right one. Hello, Michigan. Hello, Michigan. And thank you very much for four years ago, but I gave you a lot of auto plants, so I think we're even, right? And we have a lot more moving in, a lot more moving in. Thank you very much. I love you, too. If I didn't, I wouldn't be standing here because it's freezing out here. <laughs> Think of this. Two days. Now we're down to two days, right? Two days from now, we are going to win the state of Michigan again. Again. And we are going to win four more years in that very beautiful place called the White House. Over the last four years, I fought for Michigan like no one has ever fought for Michigan. Before I became president, the great state of Michigan was hemorrhaging your car companies and your car businesses. And thanks to 
corrupt politicians like Joe Biden. He's turned out to be a corrupt politician. He is corrupt. Plants were closing and moving to Mexico and many other places. You know that. You know that better than anybody. There had been new, no new plants had been built in Michigan in decades and decades before I got here. I stopped the moves and now many plants are being built and already have been built. Plants are being expanded. The automobile business is coming back. I told, I told countries, Japan, Germany, and others, sorry, you have to bring it into our country. And I always used to say, like, Michigan. I think of Michigan when I think of cars. And I'd say Michigan, but I'd say Ohio, and I'd say South Carolina, and plenty other places. And we've brought back millions of car and millions of cars produced a year. But the biggest beneficiary is right here, right here. I'm standing up to the global special interest who got rich, bleeding America dry. You know, that wind is coming right into my face. And I'm saying, it's hard to breathe. They set this place up great. That wind is pouring in as I'm talking. It's pouring in up the mouth, up the nose. This is very pleasant. This is very pleasant. I hope they don't recover. I hope they don't report this one for posterity, okay? This is a crazy place, but we love Michigan. Good job. Good job. I'm just saying, whoever set this up, they, you know, it could have had a little angle. How about if they had a little angle? The corrupt establishment hates me because I don't answer to them, I answer to you, which is true. And with your vote, we will continue to bring you jobs back to enact fair trade. You saw what we've done, but think of all the plants. Just forget about everything else. You didn't have any auto plants four years ago. I got man of the year in Michigan 12 years ago, and I left, I said, I made a speech. I said, you know, Mexico and Canada, they're taking all your car business. Why are you letting that happen? It turned out to be quite a controversial speech. It was true, but it was controversial. <laughs> It was very controversial. I laugh. I'm saying, my people are geniuses, real geniuses. But you know what? It turned out to be true. And since then, we've been doing things like nobody's ever done. Cut your taxes, cut your regulations, and ensure that more products are proudly stamped with those beautiful words, that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. Thank you very much. So we had the luck of having Ivanka here, so I said, yeah, you introduce me. And I'll tell you, that was the shortest introduction she's ever given me, and now I understand why. I understand. Thank you, darling. It was actually under the circumstances, not too bad. Next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. You see what's happening. You see what's happening. We had growth like nobody has ever seen in this country, or probably any other country, 33.1 percent. And they hardly, the fake news hardly makes it a story. But right now, they don't care. They're just trying to survive. Look at them back there. They're just trying to survive. Joe Biden will shut down your economy, raise taxes, wants a $4 trillion tax increase. He's the only politician I've ever seen who said, we will raise your taxes. You're supposed to vote for us. We will not frack. You know, he said that for a year, and then when he came to Pennsylvania, he goes like, oh yeah, I guess it's okay. No, no, there won't be energy. They're gonna go to the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal will destroy our country. The Green New Deal is done by AOC plus three, right? I don't think they ever took, do you think they ever took a course on the environment? I, I wonder, did you ever have a course on, let's say, the environment? The Green New Deal. At first, I thought they were kidding. Then I said, you know, some, actually, they are kidding. You know that. They get it. They get it. They're kidding. But, uh, but you're going to have to pay for their kidding. They want to close down your factories, ship your jobs to China, eliminate private health care, destroy the suburbs. I got rid of the, you know, I always say, women. Whoa. Oh. The women, 
That was them speaking. The women of the suburbs, you've got to love me. I got rid of the regulation that will ruin the suburbs. I cut it out. I said, let's terminate it, Ben. Let's just terminate it. But if they come back, then Cory Booker is going to be in charge. And that regulation will be, that regulation will not be good. Now we save the suburbs. They want to abolish oil, coal, natural gas, and send your state into a, you know what's going to happen here? You'll have a depression. You'll have a depression. Your gasoline will go up to six, seven dollars. How do you like the two dollar gasoline? Is that the... That's, well, you know, you'll have it for a long time if you elect Trump. If you don't, you're going to be, boom. The damage that Biden and Harris would inflict would endure for many generations. You can't fix it easy. You can't fix it easy. Under my leadership, our economy is now growing at the fastest rate ever recorded, 33.1 percent. This was announced yesterday, right? It was just announced. They didn't make a big deal out of it. If this were announced with Obama, they'd say, this is the greatest president ever. You know, he's so great that he left me 142 judges to fill, right? 142. You know what? If I were a Democrat, and think of it, I'm a Democrat, and my president left me 142 slots of judges. That's why we're going to be at 300 judges and three Supreme Court judges. They said, sir, the wind isn't so strong. No, it's about 50 miles an hour. I think it's a minus 20 degree wind chill. They call it wind chill, right? This is a this is a true test, but I love the people of Michigan. We won. We won. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. We won last time, right? It's worth it. If we didn't win last time, I probably wouldn't even be standing. I'd get up here and say, no thanks, this is a... Like the great Pavarotti, the singer, when, you know, he's a very, he was a diva. He was the greatest of all divas. He was an incredible talent with a most unbelievable voice. And I've gone to concerts where he would say, no, 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 I do not feel good. I will not sing tonight, and he'd leave. See? And then I've gone to somewhere, it was the most unbelievable voice that ever lived. I mean, the greatest, right? Pavarotti. But he was, a, he liked me for whatever reason. He was very terrible to other people. To me, he was nice. He liked me. But he goes, Donald, Donald, I will not sing tonight. You don't have a thousand people. I will not sing tonight because I do not feel, I will leave tonight. I, and it leave. I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, he's just canceled. But when he was great, he was great. But now I feel like him. I say, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm getting it. No, I don't have that. I'm not a diva. While foreign nations are in free fall, we are creating the world's greatest economic powerhouse. We are the economic envy of the world, and now the military envy of the world. We have the greatest new equipment anywhere in the world. A recent Gallup poll a recent Gallup poll found that 56% of Americans say they are better off today than they were four years ago under Obama-Biden. And we're rounding the turn on a pandemic. Think of that. So, and that's a record. In my first three years, I raised middle-class family incomes $6,500. That was in a three-year period. Whereas the Biden Harris agenda was projected and is projected to, if, if you go by that crazy plan, Wall Street Journal, you're going to lose $6,000. They're going to take it out and they're going to waste it. But it's not six, it's much more than that. And we're going up to a substantial number. That's not including energy. And if you think about energy, when you're at $2 and your electric bills are nice and low, when they get rid of all our petroleum products and other things, everything, and they go to wind. Let's build windmills all over the place. Let's litter the landscape. Let's have littered the landscape. You know, when you build a windmill, I'm not against wind. It should be in industrial areas, maybe. 
but it's very expensive, very expensive. And if you want to see a lot of dead birds, all you have to do is go to the bottom of a windmill. If you'd like to see a lot of dead birds, go to the bottom of — they pile up. They don't know what to do with them. I'll tell you, it's crazy. And they're environmentalists. They want wind. And when the wind doesn't blow, let's watch President Trump's speech tonight. State of the Union. He's done very nice State of the Union with Nancy ripping it up in the back. Crazy man. Let's watch, let's watch President Trump, let's watch his, and, and the man, the husband will say, darling, I'm sorry, we can't. The wind is not blowing tonight. It's intermittent. They call it intermittent television. We have a network, intermittent television. No, we have to power our great factories. We have to power our, our great, these plants, these great plants and factories. And you can't do it that way. Maybe someday, but right now, and solar, I like solar. It's extremely expensive. Uh, and it doesn't have near the power that you need for what we're talking about now. And you know, when we do what they want us to do, but China doesn't do it, and Russia doesn't do it, and India doesn't do it, we will be at such a competitive disadvantage, we might as well just fold up the tent. We have the number one economy in the world right now, by far. By far. And we're not losing it on my watch, I can tell you that. Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, spent 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless foreign wars. Michigan lost half of its auto job thanks to Biden's NAFTA and China disasters. You know, that. You know it's amazing. Nobody saw the debate, I'm sure, the other night, right? Nobody? Do you notice the way I kept saying, Joe, why didn't you do it? He'd say, well, I would do this, and I would do that, and I would. I said, Joe, why didn't you do it? You were there for 47 years, and you just left three and a half years ago. You know, why didn't you do it, Sleepy Joe, you sleepy guy? Sleepy. You see him now, he's got, he's got the shades on. Comes out. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, be quiet up there, be quiet. He said, they keep clapping up there. They're all our people. We have more people show up. We, they're our people. No, he's very agitated. You know how angry he is? He's so angry. You know why he's angry? Because he's losing, that's why he's angry. No, he's very agitated. I don't think he knows he's losing. I don't think he knows anything, actually. No, he's very, very angry and agitated. But now he's got the shades. What do they call them, aviators? But they're too small, they should be bigger, you know? You got the little shades on, doesn't have to work on the eyes. But uh, it is something. Do you see the way our people, they, you know, they were protecting his bus yesterday because they're nice. So his bus, they had hundreds of cars. Trump, Trump, Trump and the American flag. That's it. You see Trump and American flag. Do you ever notice when you see the other side? I don't even see much of the other side. You don't see any, they have no spirit, they have no enthusiasm, they have no nothing. But you know what, I don't see it. But whenever you see like a small group, because there's got to be small, because there's nobody around, nobody cares. But you see these groups, you never see an American flag. I always say, if you look at a group and you don't see the American flag, you know that's the opposition, you know? And I say that Congress, and I'm going to do very hard for this, because we have to go through a big deal. But I say, when somebody burns the American flag, they should go to jail for one year. I say that. And we have to get even the sisters. Oh, look at the sisters. You agree with me? That's right. These beautiful sisters. Wow. Well, we're with you. You know that. Little sisters of the poor. I'm with them. And you know, we did a good job. Are you cold? Are you cold right now? They're cold. Don't be too cold. They go, no, God will keep you warm. I know that, right? So beautiful. So beautiful. No, I, I really, we're going to do that. And because, you know, I thought I could just like institute and maybe do an executive order. They, oh, you can't do that, sir. It has to go through a whole big deal. But we're going to do it. We'll get guys like Jim Jordan and some of our great congressmen, right? We'll get our great congressmen. You have some of the great ones right here. We're going to get some of our congressmen and women, and we're going to put in, we're going to put in legislation. You burn the American flag. I see it with Antifa. They're constantly, yesterday they were burning it. 
Antifa. You burn the American flag, you go to jail for one year. It's very simple, okay? I like it. Biden embraced the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would have been a death sentence for your auto industry and your state. Uh, if it was okay with you, I canceled it, okay? Before we never, It never got off the ground for us. And I ended the NAFTA nightmare and took the toughest ever action against China and ended the long nightmare of American economic surrender. Now we have the USMCA, which is great for you, and your companies won't be leaving. Just kicked in. Your companies won't be. Well, one thing I had to have, wait, I want to, I want to, I have to look this way so I can breathe. The wind is so strong, you can't breathe. I've never, I've never had that before. It's pouring in. Man, this is a beauty. This is a hell of a day. You guys must love Trump. This place is packed. It feels so good when I look at them. It's perfect. But they didn't set it up right. That's okay. We'll get by it. But a vote for Biden is a vote to completely eradicate. I mean, you will eviscerate your auto industry. It will be terrible. We can't do it. You know, we've worked very hard to bring it back. I met with Prime Minister Abe of Japan, great guy, since retired. He had a problem with health, and uh, but a fantastic man. And I said, no, Shinzo, you have to send plants to Michigan. You have to send plants to the United States. And he said, no, 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 I cannot do that. That is a private decision. I said, Shinzo, you're a powerful man. I'm sure you can do it. No, no, no. I said, you have to do it, Shinzo, because you're making too many cars, sending them here. We want them made in the United States. You have to do it. He says, well, I can't. The next day, they announced there were five companies moving to Michigan and moving to you know, Japan. That was Japan. He was, he's a great guy, that one, I'll tell you. While Biden was giving China your jobs, his family raked in millions and millions of dollars from the Chinese Communist Party. Think of that. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician who bought and is paid for. Look, he's bought and paid for by China. How about his son? His son walks in. He's supposed to be fair. Can this guy deal with China? His son's, you know, like a human vacuum cleaner. Dad, where? Hey, Dad, what country are you going today? China. Oh, good. Maybe I can take in a couple of million, but really, it's not that. It's much more. Let me follow you, Dad. I'm the vacuum cleaner. Let me follow. I'll give you 10 percent. Hey, Dad, I'll give you 10 percent. No, he took in a billion and a half, and he managed. He, with no experience, he's managing a billion and a half dollars. Then he got his big one was. He wants China to pay $10 million a year for recommending service. He's going to recommend, okay? He's going to introduce, I guess he calls it introductory services. He's introducing his father. Sister, do you think this is honest? Do you think so? They all said no. That's good enough for me, sister. Although, how about Ukraine, the kid? Do you have any energy experience? No. When was the last time you worked? Well, I was thrown out of the military. I haven't worked in a long time. Oh, I see. But you know something about energy? No. Well, we'd love to have you serve on the board of uh, Burisma. Would $183,000 a month be satisfactory? No. Uh, I'd like you to make an upfront payment of $3 million. Okay, so we'll give you an upfront payment of $3 million. We'll give you $183,000 a month. Would you be? Yes, we'll accept that. But uh, we want very big escalation over the course of a year. Oh, we'll work that out, too. This is so corrupt. I mean, this is so corrupt. And how about just to find a Russia, Russia, Russia? Did you see the laptop from hell? Now, shifty shift. Okay, shift. You know, the world's most dishonest politician, shift. Shifty shift. He said, he thinks the laptop from hell was created by Russia. It was right. They go, you know, in Russia, they probably looked, they said, oh, no, here we go again. These, these politicians, a friend of mine said, tell me, a great guy, very successful guy. I mean, he's not really a friend anymore because he keeps calling me Mr. President. 
He used to call me, hey, Don, let's have dinner. Very successful. Richard, hey, Don, let's have dinner. Let's get together. And you talk and you'd have fun. You know, it's normal, right? Now he calls, hello, Mr. President, sir. How are you? How are you doing? Is everything good? I said, yeah, it's good, Richard. You don't have to call me Mr. President. It's just, I can't take care. It's like you lose all your friends because they're intimidated by the office. Does that make sense? You don't have any friends. I have my friends in Michigan. So, it's good. We have our friends in Michigan. Hello, Mr. President. I said, Richard, call me Donald. Okay, Donald, two minutes later. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, at least we're having a good time. Is there any place to have a better time than a Trump rally? I mean, it's very, it's very serious times, but you know, when it's cold like this, and it's probably like less than zero with the wind chill, and with the wind blowing directly. To, this was a person that works with us that doesn't like me probably very much. But no, it's direct, but we're gonna have, we're having a good time. I'm having a good time, it's really a contest. It's really a contest to see whether or not we could all stand it, right? And we'll get through it. And we'll love it. We'll love it, and I'm loving it. If Biden wins, China wins. When we win, America wins. In 2016, Michigan voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected an outsider as your president who is finally putting America first. If I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. That's me. If I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you and nobody has ever fought harder for you. Remember this, Michigan, because you got to vote. The big thing, you got to go vote Tuesday. If you don't vote for me after this deal, I'll tell you. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you because we did a great job. We brought back your car industry. Your car industry was finished. Your car industry, you would have had nothing left. If I wasn't president, I really believe you would have, everybody would have moved back out to Mexico and these other places. And by the way, the USMCA puts you on a whole different footing. You know how I know? Because Mexico and Canada didn't love the deal. That always, you know, they didn't love it. They're not. They're not so thrilled. They like, they like the old deal much better. Why can't they used to say every 15, why don't we just keep the old deal? No, thank you. You don't have to take my word for it on Biden's 47 years of treachery and betrayal. We have it on tape. You'll see this. Where the hell is it? Oh, there. We only do this for areas that we like, because that sucker is expensive. No, I mean, just seriously, just holding it up, holding it up in this wind. Go ahead, roll it. My problem is I voted for NAFTA. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on uh, international trade matters. Trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which forced American workers to compete against people who are making pennies an hour, has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs. The president is absolutely right when he says that China has been cheating for 25 years, and that Bill Clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it, George W. Bush didn't do enough about it, Barack Obama didn't do enough about it. The rising China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. The rising China is a positive, positive development. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. We want to see China rise. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the continued expansion. China is not our enemy. We talk about China as our competitor. We should be helping. The idea that China is going to eat our lunch is bizarre. The idea that they are our competition, they're going to beat us, is bizarre. They're not bad folks, folks. China is not a problem. Allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported, extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported, that those steps allowed China to take advantage of the United States by using our own open trade deals 
against us. No. Do you think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. But doesn't he deserve some credit for that? It's better. The USMCA is better than NAFTA. It is better than NAFTA. You know, we have to come together. That's why I'm running. I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. So vote! Vote! Visit iWill.com slash Ohio. God bless you. Uh, can somebody tell Joe, by the way, it's not a real website, and Joe, you're running for president, not senator, and by the way, that senator, the Mormon guy, is Mitt Romney, not some Mormon governor. Now, sadly, what we showed you, that's just from a couple of hours today, because every ch time that Joe actually leaves the basement bunker and stays out past 10 a.m., well, disaster ensues. Here's a quick reminder. Look. Tomorrow's Superstar Tuesday, and I want to thank you all. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. If you agree with me, go to Joe 30330. We choose truth over facts. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Donald Trump does pose an excellent spend to this. The, it's not hypothetical. This is pretty serious. By the way, these are way beyond an occasional campaign gaffe, and I am beginning, well, I'm more than a little worried that this man could represent a clear and present danger to this country. He's obviously not capable of leading. He's been hiding the entire campaign, and the corrupt media mob is covering for him. Joe wants to be the president of the United States of America. That would be the toughest job in the world. And at times, Joe doesn't seem to remember that he's even running for president or what state he's in or what day of the week it is. Does anyone really believe that if elected, that Joe Biden will actually be in control of anything? What kind of country are we going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Barack and I think it's a right for people that bad and kept care. Folks, we got a lot of work to do. I don't really need you to get me elected. I need you once I'm elected. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. <laughs> Come on, we know. <laughs> that is something, that is something. I don't know. You know what? Our country is great. We have such great potential. You can't do that. You can't. We want to be nice. You know the good news? He's not a nice guy, so I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad at all. One of the biggest issues for Michigan in this election is the subject of refugees. <laughs> With this weather, you don't have to worry about it. They'll never come. <laughs> They're never coming. <laughs> you said a beer that said, I'm going back. This is terrible. It's freezing up there. <laughs> I want to go back immediately to Syria. Uh, Syria. Syria never looked so good. To protect our national security, I suspended the entry of refugees from foreign nations compromised by terrorism. You know that. If it's okay with you, I'm going to do that. And you see what? You see what's happening in France? You see that? mess that's going on over there. I called the president uh, with condolences, but they're having a big problem. Biden has pledged with Bernie the manifesto, 700 percent increase. They've agreed to this in refugees from the most dangerous terror spots in the world. Syria, Somalia, Yemen. The Biden plan will turn Michigan, Minnesota, and many other Midwest great states into refugee camps. 
which I'm sure you're thrilled about. I'm sure you're thrilled about. He's also vowed to terminate uh, all of the different elements of, uh, look, we have some, you know, we have some very strong bands, so very, very strong bands, and he wants to terminate. I got a travel ban that was tough stuff to get it, and it was not easy, but he wants to terminate the travel ban, and we have a travel ban that works. When we have people that hate us, when we have countries that hate us, they come out of regions that are a disaster. We don't want them in our country. We don't want them. But it would have allowed what they want. They want to allow virtually unlimited immigration into our country. They want to allow virtually unlimited access into our country. They want to health care. Education, I mean, the whole thing is crazy. It's just crazy. There's no way you're putting that guy in. I don't believe it. There's no way. The people of Michigan are too smart, and we've come too far together. This place, this place was a mess. This place was a mess four years ago. And frankly, if your governor opened up your state, which he has to do, well, Biden, you know, Biden's all about lockdowns. He loves the, he loves a lockdown. Well, she's tough on everybody but her husband. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not just running against Joe Biden. I'm running against the left-wing mob, the left-wing media, big tech giants. I'm running against the rhinos. They're probably the worst of all. And I'm running against the swamp. The swamp is very deep and very vicious. And they are not happy with the job we've done. And by the way, I don't know if you've been watching what's going on with the election. And this isn't even polls anymore. This is like fact. These are people going out and voting. We're doing very, very well. We're leading all over the place. You know, we're supposed to be leading after the big, uh, the great red wave is going to come over the next little while. It's coming, it's building. It's going to be a wave like I think, and this is far beyond the last one. This is going to be a wave like nobody's ever seen before. Tuesday. Did you vote Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Tuesday. Super Tuesday, we'll call it, right? Tuesday is going to be beautiful. Great red wave. But we're leading even before we get there. You know, we're supposed to, like, they have all these crazy ballots, millions and millions of ballots. Well, we're leading a lot of places before. We're supposed to be way down, and then we catch up and we win. We nip them like a racehorse, right? But we're leading before we get to the race. We haven't. No, they're very worried. And they're very worried. They said, the black community, the Hispanic community, what's going on? It's voting for Trump. What's going on? They don't get it. What's going on? They don't get it. They still don't get it. People cannot stand the censorship from the media and big tech either. It's one of the reasons we're doing well, because they understand. They no longer feel they're getting the truth from the media. It's a big factor. They've lost confidence in the media. They have no confidence in big tech. And they're tired, very tired, of cancel culture. They're tired of being told what to think and what to do. And I'll tell you, it's having a big impact on this race. People get it. People are smart. The backlash against this censorship is driving more and more people to support our campaign. Who would have thought this was going to happen? This took place two weeks ago when they wouldn't look at, uh, where's Hunter, right? Where, there he is. Where's Hunter? No, two weeks ago when they wouldn't look at where's Hunter, and they have, because we officially made his first name Where, right? Because everyone's constantly, that is called the laptop from hell, and they didn't want to look at it. They want nothing to do with it, no matter what they do. Look, the greatest crime, political crime ever in this country, was spying on our campaign, and they got caught, right? That was the greatest crime, and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. But this is something that's really big, and they don't even want to talk about it. They don't want to write about it. They don't want to talk about it. 
But you know what? The people understand, and you get to see it. You have a small handful of young, arrogant, obnoxious, also brilliant young people. They're worth a lot of money, Silicon Valley CEOs, and they're trying to take over our worlds. Not going to happen. Hey, let's do this. They said to me the first election, they said, sir, you can't fight big tech and you can't fight the media. And then we won and I said, oh, really? Yeah, I said. Now they say it again. You cannot fight big tech and you cannot fight the media. I want to win again if for no other reason. Right? If for no other reason. But you can defeat them if you have the right ideas, the right policy, if you have the right thoughts, and you have people that are smart, and they don't go for fake news because it's fake news. I've been calling it one of the great terms. I, you know, I hope they give me credit for fake news. That was a great term. Now I call it corrupt news because it's gone beyond fake. It's totally corrupt. But vote on November 3rd. You vote. We're going to have an election. And you know, I never thought I'd say because what we did was incredible four years ago. This is more important. This is going to be the most, this could be the most important election in the history of our country. Because if that side gets in, those maniacs, AOC plus three, Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar, they're going to put, <laughs> they're going to put Ilhan Omar in charge of immigration. <laughs> She will be in charge of immigration. Uh, if these people, they're maniacs who don't like our country, you know, do you think Ilhan Omar, that's one of the reasons we're going to win Minnesota, because of Ilhan Omar. How the hell did she get elected? I guess she's got a little group of people. Didn't she harvest? I heard she ballot harvested, didn't she? So where is our Justice Department? She, she ballot, everybody's telling me stories. They have a great writer in Minnesota. And he writes stories about her volumes. And nothing ever happens to her. Ilhan Omar, she's harvesting ballots. It's illegal, right? They have a story. So where the hell, why aren't they looking at her? If I did that, they'd be looking at me. They'd be looking at anybody here. It's a disgrace. Honestly, it's a disgrace. And AOC, right? AOC, but didn't she steal $2 million out of her campaign? Didn't, didn't AOC steal $2 million out of her campaign? So why aren't they looking at her? Why aren't they looking at her, Justice Department? The Justice Department, they should be looking at... She stole $2 million out of her campaign, AOC plus three, right? It's unbelievable. This election is a choice between the Biden depression, because you will have a depression. He's going to raise your taxes. He's going to put regulations back in. All of those plants that moved in are going to close up and say, we're going back to Japan. These people are crazy, right? Or you can have the greatest economic boom in the history of our country. It's a choice between a deadly Biden lockdown. He wants to lock it down and a safe vaccine. And you do it without the vaccine, too. But the vaccine is going to make it quicker. It's coming in a matter of weeks. It's going to be distributed immediately. We're going to start with the seniors, but it's going to go very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. It's going to be really fantastic. It's going to be, I think you'll see something that's going to be absolutely amazing. And thanks to our groundbreaking therapies, here I am, therapy. No, it's, I don't know if it had any impact, but I sure as hell felt good the next morning. I can tell. I like to say no, it's because I'm in perfect physical health. I'm a perfect physical specimen and I'm very, very young. I feel young. I didn't need therapy, but I said, give it to me anyway, just in case. And we've already reduced the fatality rate by 85%. Think of it. The Biden plan is to imprison you in your home. And, but that's what you're going through right now with this governor. This governor, I got to tell you, your governor, your governor is not doing a good job. She is not doing a good job. I mean, think of it, your state, we have other states that are open in Florida. Look at Florida, look at Texas, look at these, look at Arizona, the great job they've done there. 
they had a spike and they wiped, you know, they focused on the elderly and this and that, all the things. And, and they're open and they're doing great. Your state is like locked down and it's your governor. Do you know what's going to happen? On November 4th, she's going to announce we're going to open up the state. See, she thought that the numbers, and she, and by the way, North Carolina, right? And let's see, uh, Pennsylvania is shut down. It's shut down, locked down. It's all locked down. On the 4th, which one? Yeah, well, New York, absolutely. New York's become a ghost town, sister. What they've done, what Cuomo has done to New York is unbelievable. It's terrible. It's terrible. What they've done in New York, and you take a look at certain things. I mean, and then with crime, take a look at Portland. You know, we want to go into Portland so badly. Our guys would solve the Portland problem in about 12 minutes, right? But we have to be asked, because we play nice nowadays. We have to be asked by the governor. We keep asking, do you want us to go in yet? No, sir, let a few more stores burn down. That's Antifa, that's anarchists. And you know what? They're easy. They're so easy. They're so easy. Look at what happened to Chicago. Do you know every — we're talking about all Democrat-run cities, all run by the left or the radical left, and these are the problem areas. The Republican cities — I'm not — it's fact. They're all doing great. We're doing great, the Republican cities. That's why you can't have a radical left. And Joe's not really radical left. He's shot. It doesn't matter. He's shot. Let's face it. I mean, let's face it. Oh, by the way, those flips, those are the easy ones. Those, we didn't want to go any worse. They're much worse than that. They're actually, you know, they're so bad that they're not even funny. The Biden lockdown will mean no school, no graduations, no weddings for you, no Thanksgivings, no Easter's, no Christmases, no Fourth of July's, and no future. Other than that, I think he's doing quite a good job, right? Under Biden's lockdown, you will be living in a prison state. That's what it is. They want to lock it down. Let's lock our country down for a couple of years and let it go away. And by the way, those are the people that do the worst. They're the ones doing the worst. Europe imposed draconian lockdowns and cases were surging and deaths were surging. But think of it, draconian. Now they have to do it all over again. What the hell are they doing? I think I'm going to go over and explain it to them. But you know, they're going to, they're locking down parts of Europe again. By the way, when you think about it, though, in all fairness, look what China has done to the world. Okay? No, no, look, look, I made a great trade deal with them. They ordered, two weeks ago, they ordered the largest order of corn, the largest order of soybeans, the largest order of beef ever in the history of our country. You know what? It, it's, it doesn't matter to me anymore. It's almost like it doesn't matter to me anymore. And obviously, they did the big order. It was the biggest order ever. So the farmers love Trump. They should love Trump with what I did with ethanol. And a great poll just came out in Iowa. You saw that, right? Des Moines Register again. Trump is winning by a lot. By a lot. But, no, I've been great. And I got China to give the farmers $28 billion because China targeted the farmers. And all of that stuff. But look at what China has done to the world. Forget us. It's us and Europe and the world. Look at when you see Europe is draconian shutdowns and they're shutting and they're surging. This is all, it all came out of China and they could have stopped it. They stopped it from going to the rest of China. It, they stopped it at the Wuhan province. They stopped it, but it came to us and it came to Europe and it went to the 188 countries are suffering. I mean, there, look at, look at what China just think of it. Look at what China has done to the world. Look at you with the masks and everything else. Look at what China, today you should wear them anyway, probably. But seriously, look at what China, look at what China has done to the world. And we're not forgetting it. We're not forgetting it. And the reason they ordered the corn and the reason, you know why? Because they now figured out we're going to win. We're going to win. That's the only reason. And if Biden ever won, China will own the United States of America. Because he has no clue. He's not a smart person. And in prime time, he wasn't a smart person. He was always known as a dummy. He was always known as a dummy. And that was 20, 25 years ago. And now he's a dummy and a half.
Biden will trap you in a dark winter. Remember during the debate, it will be a dark winter. Oh, how inspiring, how wonderful. <laughs> Harry, let's watch the debate tonight. I want to be inspired by the person running against President Trump. This will be a dark winter. Oh, great, that's wonderful. Harry, let's vote, let's vote for Trump, please. I mean, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world. We were beating everybody. China was, we were going like a rocket ship up from China. If you read your books over the last, if you were into this world, for 10 years they said, 2019 China will eclipse the United States as the number one biggest economy of the world. I was going like, his, I was going like this, but then we got hit with the plague from China. We then got hit with the plague. But now, is, uh, when you see one, when you see the number that was released on Thursday, you say, wow, Trump was right. And that number could only be, I mean, whoever thought of that? 33%, 33.1% increase. It beat the number. You know, second place was 1952, and the number was less than half. So we got it going, but you know what? We've gone through a lot. We've gone through a lot. The whole world has gone through a lot. For what? For what? Why have we done it? So I'm delivering the great American comeback, and we're not having any lockdowns, okay? That I can tell you. There's no lockdown. <laughs> Joining us today, your congressional candidate, Lisa McLean. Where's Lisa? Where's Lisa? I heard you're doing well. Do well. Are you cold enough? No, you're just fine. Thank you. Good luck. And Michigan GOP chairwoman who's doing a fantastic job, Laura Cox. Laura, how's it going, Laura? Good? We're going to win? I think so. I hear we're going to win. And Michigan GOP co-chair, Terry Bowman. Terry? Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Good job. We could have picked a little better day. For 47 years, Joe Biden viciously attacked African Americans. We know that. He shipped away your jobs, decimated the black middle class, and flooded your cities with foreign labor, gangs, and drugs. He opened, and he openly called, and I think everyone knows this, he openly called young black men super predators. In 1994, the crime bill, he devastated black families in places like Philadelphia, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Detroit. I reversed that injustice with the landmark criminal justice reform. And nobody else, and I'll tell you, nobody else could have gotten it but me. We had a lot of help. Nobody else could have gotten it. Obama never even tried. Nobody tried. Biden said that if black Americans don't vote for him, you ain't black, which is a famous, famous thing, but that, that's not, that's not nearly as bad as other things he did. So I have a message for every African-American voter in Michigan and across America. Tuesday is your chance to show Joe, and you know that, right? Tuesday's your big, Tuesday is our big deal as a country. Show Joe Biden and the Democrat Party what you think of their decades of betrayal and abuse. Tuesday is your chance to show Joe Biden what you think of his decision to mistreat, abuse, and wrongly imprison so many African Americans. And that's what he did. That crime bill was a disgrace. And you know, that's what's happening in Florida. So we're doing well with African Americans. We're doing very well. But a lot of them just aren't showing up because they don't want to vote for this guy. You know, typically, they vote Democrat. It's changing a lot. It's changing really fast. And by the way, John James is a very good guy. I hope you're going to be voting for him. John James, a very good guy. And he's running against a guy. Nobody even knows who he is, Peters. I was there three years. I said, I said, who's Peters? Oh, he's a senator. He's a senator from Michigan. Nobody, nobody knows who Peters is. He does nothing. He's a puppet for Schumer. No, you should vote John James. He's a great young guy. The great young man, West Point, 
a great military background, did well in business, and he wants to do this, and he's doing us a favor. I think he could be a star, and I hope, I hope Michigan goes for John James. To every black American, I'm asking you for your vote. I'm asking you to send a message to the corrupt Democrat establishment that it is corrupt. We welcome you to the Republican Party. By the way, it happens to be the party of the late, great Abraham Lincoln, right? Can't do better than that. Under our platinum plan, you heard about that, we'll create three million new jobs for black Americans, increase access to capital, and deliver school choice to every family. School choice. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military. We also passed VA choice and VA accountability, which is incredible for our our great veterans. You know, we had a 91% approval factor rating the other day from uh, the veterans. Highest ever. We killed the leader of ISIS. You know who that is? Al-Baghdadi. They've been looking for him for a long time. We took out the mass murderer of U.S. troops and many other troops and many other people. Soleimani is dead also. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. 52 years they worked on that. I got it done in two hours. And instead of endless war in the Middle East, peace is breaking out. We're signing. Company, countries are lined up. They're all lined up. We're signing them one by one. Biden will plunge America. What? Oh. That's very good. Let me see that. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Biden will plunge America and the world into one ridiculous war after another. You know, he thinks he's a tough guy. Remember what he said a year ago, I'd like to take him behind the bar. You know what? Boom. I didn't even have to close. I just, ding, he's gone. He's a tough guy, right? With his, with his sunglasses. His new deal is his sunglasses. His new deal are those sunglasses. He was, he was very agitated, right? See him, yes? And then he'd have like two, two cars, honk, honk, honk. We have more in the, in the 10 feet of the front row than, than he had yesterday. And I hate to say it, Obama doesn't draw any better. They went as a twosome and they had less people. A vote for me and the Republican Party is a vote for the American dream. And in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America. It's getting warmer now, do you know? I don't, let's stay here longer. I don't want to. I came here for the worst. Now it's getting good and I'm supposed to leave. I'm not leaving. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. And we will end our reliance on China that's already happening. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assault on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will defend the right to life, religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency. January 1st it starts. It's going to be incredible. Lower drug prices even more. We're going favored nations. You'll get them down 70, 80, and 90 percent. We go from the highest to the lowest in the world. Protect Social Security and Medicare, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. 
We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Michigan. You didn't see me leave, did you? Huh? I'm lucky. Uh, you better get out there and vote. Thank you very much. I love you too. I do. Two days from now, you have the power, with your vote, to save the American dream, to save our country from what could happen to it. You look at Venezuela, you look at so many other countries. 20 years ago, Venezuela was a strong country. It was one of the richest countries. Today, they have no water, they have no food, they have no medicine, they have nothing. This is the same ideology that you're seeing trying to come in. We can't let it happen. This country, and I've said it many times, will never be a socialist country. This will never be. But you have to go out and vote. On November 3rd, we must finish the job, drain the swamp. The swamp is deeper and stronger and more vicious than ever. But we've done a hell of a job, and they cannot believe that we're in this position when we're now leading. Look, we're leading in Florida. We're leading in Georgia. We're leading, forget Texas, we're leading. So how about Texas? You go to Texas, this guy says, yeah, we're against oil, right? We're against God, and we're against guns. We're going to take away your guns. So now we're in Texas. You can't have any more oil, no more oil wells. Let's take all the oil wells away. So no oil, no God, no guns. And you're in then they say, it's a very close race in Texas. I don't think so. They did that four years ago, and I won in a landslide, right? They said, Texas is too close to call. The door's closed. Donald Trump has won Texas. What the hell happened? Uh, they said it with Utah. Remember they said the guy came in, he came his character. Nobody ever heard of him. He was supposed to be great. And they kept talking about him. And then I won by, what, 22 points or something? In fact, in fact crazy Hillary, crooked Hillary uh, came in. <laughs> Here we go. Watch. Here we go. They always blame me. Whatever that chance starts, all I do is I mention her name. I didn't do anything. Well, they say it with you, Governor. Every time I mention a name, they say the same thing. And they say, and they say, he is inciting. I'm inciting. On Tuesday, Michigan is going to make history once again. You made history. And by the way, so, you know, I came here a lot, and we ended up winning, and it hadn't been won for many, many years by a Republican. Are you happy with your choice? All those plants that you have opened, and, and opening, by the way, and you have plenty coming to, you wouldn't have any of them if I weren't your president, I can tell you that. And you have plenty more coming. For generations, America's destiny was made, forged and won in places like Midland, Mackinac, Lansing, and Grand Rapids. You know, Grand Rapids, that was where I made my last speech, right? I made my last speech. 32,000 people showed up at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I said, I said, we're not losing. I, we had a crowd, you wouldn't believe it. One o'clock in the morning, it was now election day because it had gone over. One o'clock, 32,000 people, Grand Rapids, I'll never forget it. And I said, this doesn't feel like I'm coming in second place. And guess what? We didn't. Battle Creek and Macomb County. Our American ancestors gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country and our freedom. 
We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. That's true. That's true. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Michigan, we have made America powerful again, our military, our military so powerful. We have made America wealthy again. Look at what's happening. 401ks are doing very well. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Michigan. Thank you.